السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome in English for Palestine Hi my dear students in 11th grade Today we are going to discuss part 2 in period 2 unit 3 safety first Let's start with the objectives of our lesson today. Number one, to skim the text for the main points. Number two, to skim the text for specific information about safety regulations. Number three, to scan the text for more details. Number four, to answer the questions carefully. Yes, what are the main points which we are going to discuss in our lesson today? Safety first. Yes, we will discuss safety regulations in the 19th century في القرن التاسع عشر and in the poor countries في الدول الفقيرة in the rich countries and over the last 20 years ago وفي العشرين السنة الأخيرة We have four sentences Please read them carefully and stop the video to read the whole text quickly to find the number of the paragraph which related to each sentence Let's go Yes, this is the whole text. Please read it quickly to find the answers. Yes, now let's read the sentences to find the number of the paragraph which related to each sentence. Number one, there is a change in the attitude among the people over the last 20 years. هنالك تغير بالآراء بين الناس في العشرين سنة الأخيرة. This is paragraph four. Safety regulations are very weak and the dangers remain in poor countries. قوانين السلامة ضعيفة والخطر ما زال قائم في الدول الفقيرة. This is paragraph two. The government improves the safety regulations under the pressure of the workers' organizations. Yes, الحكومة طورت من قوانين السلامة تحت ضغط من المنظمات العمالية. Paragraph one. Safety regulations have extended into many areas in rich countries. قوانين السلامة امتدت إلى مناح أخرى في الدول الغنية This is paragraph 3 Now I want you to read paragraph number 1 so carefully to complete these sentences Under the workers organizations pressure تحت ضغط من المنظمات العمالية The government passed what? ماذا أسنت الحكومة? For whom and whom? Yes, now let's start with the first paragraph in our lesson today, safety first. I want you to look at the pictures carefully. Look at the second picture here. Yes, who are those people? They are workers, organizations, منظمات عمالية. Look at the third picture. Yes, they are agricultural workers, عمال زراعيون. In the fourth picture, industrial workers. And in the last picture, we see the word law. What's the relationship between these pictures? We will know more in paragraph number one. In 19th century, your life was full of danger for both agricultural workers and those who worked in the industrial factories with the new machinery. في القرن التاسع عشر كانت حياة الأوروبيون مليئة بالخطر للعمال الزراعيون والعمال الصناعيون الذين يعملون بالآلات الحديثة. Gradually, بالتدريجيا, under pressure from workers' organizations, وتحت ضغط من المنظمات العمالية, governments began to pass laws. بدأت الحكومة بسن القوانين to improve conditions لتحسن الوضع. وضع الخطورة الذي يتعرض له كل من العمال الصناعيون والعمال الزراعيون. And employers now have to take responsibility for the safety of their employees. والمشغلون أصبحوا يتحملوا مسؤولية سلامة موظفيهم أو مشغليهم. Yes, now let's examine our understanding to paragraph number one. Under the workers' organization pressure. تحت ضغط من المنظمات العمالية What's happened? The government passed safety laws بدأت الحكومة بسن القوانين For both لكل من Agricultural workers and industrial workers لكل من العمال الزراعيين والعمال الصناعيين Now I want you to read paragraph number two so carefully to find the answer of this question. Safety regulations in poor countries are very weak and dangerous. Remain. ضعيفة جدا والخطر ما زال قائم في الدول الفقيرة. 
Why? What are the reasons? ما هي الأسباب? Let's read paragraph number two to know the answers. Let's move to paragraph number two. I want you to look at the pictures carefully. Are the people in the pictures applying the safety regulations or not? Of course, they aren't applying safety regulations. Why? We will know the reason when we read paragraph number two. In poorer countries, though, safety regulations are weak and the dangers remain. في الدول الفقيرة قوانين السلامة ضعيفة والخطر ما زال قائم. There is a feeling usually unspoken among governments and employers in these countries that safety in the workplace is a luxury. هنالك شعور غير مصرح به بين الحكومات والمشغلين في هذه الدول أن قوانين السلامة في أماكن العمل يعتبر رفاهية. That they can't afford وهذا لا يقدرون عليه. And that safety regulations وقوانين السلامة make business less competitive and brings less money وتجعل من عملهم أقل تنافسا وتجلب لهم القليل من الأموال So this is the reason why they, there aren't safety regulations in poor countries Yes, now let's return to our question Why safety regulations in poor countries very weak and dangerous remain Yes, لماذا قوانين السلامة في الدول الفقيرة ضعيف والخطر ما زال قائم؟ Yes, why? Because the government and the employers considers considered safety as a luxury. لأن الحكومة والمشغلين بيعتبروا السلامة وقوانين السلامة هي رفاهية. Safety regulations make business less competitive and brings less money. ولأن قوانين السلامة تجعل من عملهم أقل تنافسا وتجلب لهم القليل من الأموال. Yes, now I want you to read paragraph number three so carefully to find the answers. Safety regulations in rich countries have extended to many areas such as, yes, please read and complete. Look at the pictures carefully as we see all the people in these pictures follow the safety regulations. In hospitals, in schools, in transport, and in all the public services. Where and why? Let's read paragraph number three to know more. Meanwhile, in richer countries, health and safety regulations have been extended into other areas of life. في هذه الأثناء في الدول الغنية قوانين الصحة والسلامة امتدت إلى نواح أخرى بالحياة. Like transport, schools, hospitals, and other public services, مثل المواصلات والمدارس والمستشفيات وكل الخدمات العامة. In most countries, for example, في معظم البلدان على سبيل المثال, it's against the law to drive a car without wearing a seat belt. يعتبر قيادة بدون وضع حزام الأمان شيء ضد القانون. When this law was first suggested, عندما اقترح القانون لأول مرة, some people believed it should be a matter of personal choice. اعتقد البعض أنها قد تكون مسألة شخصية. But it's now accepted that wearing seatbelt has saved many lives. ولكنهم الآن أصبح من المسلم به هو أن وضع حزام الأمان قد أنقذ حياة الكثير من الأرواح. After we have studied paragraph number three, the answers are clear. Safety regulations in rich countries have extended to many areas. قوانين السلامة في الدول الغنية امتدت إلى مناح أخرى, such as what schools, yes, hospitals, and transport, especially wearing the seatbelt, and also in the public places or public surfaces. Yes, now I want you to read paragraph number four to complete the outline. In the last 20 years, there is a change of the attitude. هنالك تغير في الآراء. It's divided into two opinions. هي انقسمت إلى انقسمين. Especially in wearing the helmets. What are these two opinions? Let's move to the last paragraph in our lesson today. I want you firstly to look at the pictures. Look at the first and second picture. Yes, this is a school trip. Look at the third picture. This is a popular Brits, Jarida Shabia. Look at the fourth picture. 
The man wears a helmet. But look at the last picture. The man doesn't wear a helmet. What's the relationship between these pictures? Yes, let's know more in our paragraph, paragraph number four. Over the last 20 years or so, there has been gradual change in attitude. في العشرين السنة الماضية كان هنالك تغير تدريجي بالمواقف partly because of regular stories in the popular press كان ذلك بشكل جزئي بسبب القصص المنظمة التي ظهرت بالجريدة الشعبية about school children not being allowed to go in school trips or play traditional games in the playground بسبب الأطفال المدارس الذين لم يسمح لهم بالذهاب إلى الرحلات المدرسية أو اللعب بالألعاب التقليدية القديمة في الملاعب Some of these stories were not actually true بعضا من هذه القصص ليس حقيقي بالفعل But still the feeling has grown that government regulation has gone too far ولكن الشعور بأن الحكومة قد تجاوزت الحد بالقانون Taking away people's responsibility for their own safety جردت الناس من تحمل سلامتهم مسؤولية سلامتهم الخاصة This may be one reason why there are still only two countries in the world where all cyclists by law have to wear helmets وهذا السبب الذي جعل أن هنالك فقط ما زالت دولتان هي التي تجبر بالقانون لبسة الخوضة In other countries في بلدان أخرى Governments don't want to restrict people's personal freedom. الحكومات لا ترغب في تقييد حرية الناس الشخصية. Yes, now after we have studied paragraph number four, the answers are clear now. In the last twenty years, there is a change of the attitude. أصبح هنالك تغير في الآراء. We have two opinions, especially in wearing the helmets, خاصة في لبسة الخوذة. Why do we have two opinions? Because the regular stories in the popular press. بسبب القصص المنظمة التي ظهرت بالجريدة الشعبية. We have two opinions. Some governments considered it as a personal Freedom. اعتبروها حرية شخصية and some governments considered it as a compulsory why they considered it as a compulsory to protect the people from danger and save the lives لينقذوا حياة الناس من الخطر وينقذ الأرواح and some governments considered it as a personal freedom اعتبروها كحرية شخصية yes they don't want to restrict people's personal freedom لأنهم لا يريدون أن يقيدوا حرية الناس الشخصية Yes, now let's test our understanding to the text. Answer the questions with sentences. Number one, why did governments in 19th century Europe start to improve safety for their workers? لماذا الحكومة في القرن التاسع عشر بدأت بتطوير قوانين السلامة للعمال? Because they were under pressure from workers' organizations. لأنهم كانوا تحت ضغط من المنظمات العمالية. Number two, why are workplaces in poorer countries still dangerous? لماذا بعض أماكن العمل في الدول الفقيرة خطيرة؟ Because safety regulations are weak لأن قوانين السلامة ضعيفة Number three What did some people think about car seat belt at first? ماذا اعتقد الناس عن حزام الأمان في البداية؟ Some people believed it should be a matter of personal choice اعتقدوا بأنها قد تكون مسألة خيار شخصي Number four What has recently made some people change their minds about safety regulations? ما الذي جعل الناس يغيروا من آرائهم عن قوانين السلامة? Because it's now accepted that wearing seatbelt has saved many lives. لأنهم الآن أدركوا بأن لبسة حزام الأمان قد أنقذت حياة الكثير من الأرواح. Why have most government made it compulsory to wear a cycle helmets? لماذا بعض الحكومات لم تجعل لبسة الخوذة شيء إلزامي؟ Because they don't want to restrict people's personal freedom. لأنهم لا يريدون تقييد حرية الناس الشخصية. Now let's examine our understanding by answering this question. Put it true or false. Number one. In 19th century, the government didn't improve safety regulations. في القرن التاسع عشر الحكومة لم تطور قوانين السلامة. Of course, this is false. Number two, safety regulations are weak in poor countries. قوانين السلامة ضعيفة في الدول الفقيرة. This is true. Number three, 
people change their minds because they accepted that wearing seatbelts has saved many lives. الناس غيرت من أرائها لأنها أدركت أن لبسة لبسة حزام الأمان قد أنقذت حياة الكثير من الأرواح. This is true. Number four, some countries made it as personal choice to wear the helmets because they don't want to restrict people's freedom. بعض الدول جعلت من لبسة الخودة خيار شخصي لأنها لا تريد أن تقيد حرية الناس الشخصية. This is true. Yes, now it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye, my students, and thank you for your watching, and see you in the next video, inshallah.